Hey, welcome everybody to Spirituality Adventures. We're glad you're tuning into this episode. Uh, we are a viewer and listener supported podcast, so we really appreciate you listening, watching on YouTube. We really encourage you to subscribe to whatever platform you're using. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, or if you're on Apple or however you listen to a podcast, be sure and subscribe. We greatly appreciate it. Also, make comments if you like it and share it if you like it. We really need people to make comments and share the episodes that you like. And then also, if you're not already a supporter, we really would encourage you to go to spiritualityadventures.com and you can pick a tier and we have bonus content for every type of giver. These are this is a nonprofit, so they're tax deductible donations, but we do provide bonus content for those who uh, are supporters. So be a part of the team, help support Spirituality Adventures, and we're so glad you're tuning into this episode. Welcome, everybody, to Spirituality Adventures. Thanks for tuning into this episode, and I'm excited today. I have Carrie Klein and Joel McGlynn, who are with the band Hot Glue and the Gun. Hey, hey, and uh, Hi. hey, Fred. So I, I got to see them perform at Wild Goose last summer. Mm -hmm. So many of my listeners, uh, you know, I've, that was the second time I went to Wild Goose and uh, I'm trying to make it an annual uh, visit now. So, uh, yeah, so you guys were amazing. And did you already know Rod Colburn when, when you were? No, we no, have, that was we have since come to know Rod fairly well and okay. are very grateful for that and that was our first time yeah that it's, was our first goose yeah. yes okay. uh, we've Ooh. been wanting to go for years and it just the timing hadn't worked out but last summer was the one second wild goose and brian mclaren had gotten me to go to the the first the one before you were there okay i loved it so much and rod rod colburn's one of my board members on spirituality adventures i'm oh, sweet I was like Rod, we got to get we got to get a little crew together to hit Wild Goose, and so ended up Samir and and Nick, and yeah. interview both Samir on this uh, podcast as well as as uh, Nick Lapara with Let's Give It, Let's Give It Down. Yeah, so we were all we were all sitting right in front of you at Wild Goose when you did your at least one of your performance. I don't know how many you performed, but when you're in the bigger setting. And it was so fun. And uh, the theatrical components to your musical mm -hmm. performance were just so fun. So we, we all had to get to know you better. And, and now we, I'm, I'm excited. Plus I got to smoke a cigar with Carrie out on the, <laughs> yeah. out on the uh, patio. Thanks to Nick LaPara. <laughs> Thanks to Nick LaPara. I mean, shout out to let's give a damn. And Nick yeah, LaPara. absolutely. Yeah. They provided the cigars and we we're, you know, here I am sitting here with the Empire State Building, you know, in the background. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool thing. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, All right. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about your uh, your own backstory, your own origin story. Where where did you grow up and and then how did you meet and how did you get into music and theater? Let's yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, that. so are we asking for uh, Carrie and Joelle's backstories, or yeah. are we asking for like Hot Glue and the Guns backstory? So we could... I want your individual story. Uh -huh. cool. Then, cool. Then I want the Hot Glue and the Gun. Then move me into. And we can move on into that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I grew up suburbs of Chicago, uh, mm. and my family's still there. Um, and uh, I came to New York to go to school. So that's what brought me here. And I just, I love New York city. I love this life and I've stayed. So this has really become home. I've now been here, you know, longer than not. Um, but growing up, um, you know, my parents were, uh, both from, uh, immigrant, um, grant, well, immigrant grandparents. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, so more like kind of German, uh, Catholic on that side and Italian Catholic on, on mom's side. And then, uh, they, when my mom and dad got married, they decided they didn't want to raise me Catholic. Um, 
So we just found a church that was in the Chicago suburbs and they really got turned on by, um, uh, is it Bill? Uh, what's Bill's last name? Bill Hybels uh, out of Willow Creek in the Chicago suburbs. And uh, so we started going and then I was actually the one that kept them going because the youth program there was so dynamic that I just wanted to go every Sunday. My friends were there, singing was happening there. I liked that, the stories that were being did shared. Did that connect to like music and theater for you at all at that time or? Um, you know, I guess so uh, in a way because of how much music was happening there. It, uh, I was exposed to music outside of church. My parents were uh, very much into theater. Like my mom grew up doing theater in high school. so. Um, musical theater was always something that we would go and do and we would drive down to Chicago to go see whatever was playing at the time. And uh, so, but but seeing it so close and in church inspired me, I think as a young person to uh, want to be able to stand there behind the microphone and, and do that too. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I grew up in a... <clears throat> a, a wildly unique experience for many people, right? Um, my my parents, my dad, since we're talking about some some sort of uh, origin story, my dad was raised uh, Irish Catholic in the outskirts of Atlantic City, New Jersey. My mother was raised Jewish uh, in Vineland, New Jersey, which is uh, aptly named and uh if you wonder where the it's garden fine, state is yes. if all you see is newark then yeah that, that part uh -huh. um and they uh this was in the 70s and they uh they sort of founded a communal kind of living and they really were they were into both uh the 700 club and like francis schaefer and they were really into like um we, we lived in community and we would take people in. And so I was completely surrounded by this uh, panopticon of adults. And since we were homeschooled, my sister and myself, I didn't really get any kind of connection to other kids, except when we would go sometimes to a local church on Sunday uh, or, or, or like, uh, my mom had friends who were single moms who would bring their broods over. And so like I had that. Um, and didn't they begin a soup kitchen that's still alive? Yeah, there? yeah, they did. That was that was later, um, closer to like when we moved to Vineland when I was about uh, 10 or 11 and then. Uh, Spirit and Truth Ministries. Right, and then my, and then my mother died um, when I was 13. And she had sort of just gotten this soup kitchen going and probably in no small part connected to her death. It That sort of launched it to the point where there were what was the thing that that made us really happy about it was that there were like five different churches who did not speak to each other, except that they all joined the soup kitchen and we would move from kitchen to kitchen and, and, and get them to collapse because we could agree on feeding people is, is something that we all need to be doing. Right. Um, <laughs> and I, I still remember uh, there was the, the Cumberland players, this little like old, I think it had been like a rail station converted into a community theater and they had a summer improv program and my mom was like, there's got to be a way to get Joelle's hamminess a channel. <laughs> so uh, she, she signed me up for that program. And it, awesome. it was the first time other than like climbing a tree or running in the woods that I felt like just joy, mm -hmm. uh, just joy. Uh, and then uh, and then. So she so she died when I was 13 and then I started public high school that fall and getting into the theater was really uh it gave me um gave you a really a center yeah. it, it gave me a center yeah. Cool. yeah yeah so I interviewed Frank Schaefer 
Uh, oh yeah. Awesome. I've yeah. Done this podcast as well. Um, but was, was, were your parents kind of pattering this after Labrie, which was Francis? They were, they were very much. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. 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 And I, I actually got uh, on my journey and part of it, it was like, right when I was, I was sort of like done with uh, what my, what my, my buddy and I, who we were there at Labrie together, we, we affectionately call evangelism. Um, and, <laughs> And I and I was thinking I was maybe done with like Christianity, period. And my grandmother uh, sent me to Labrie, uh, and I. Oh, you mean you I, actually went to Switzerland? To no, the- no. There's, there's, they're all over the world. Okay, okay. okay. So I went to the one in Southboro, okay. Massachusetts, and I I spent three terms there. One as a student, and then two is what they call a helper, which is kind of like work study. Um, Fascinating. Yeah. 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 And then we did about a week to get yeah, there after a after year after we, got we married. were married, uh, which was down the road. And, you know, I guess we could talk about us meeting. Um, Jump into that. Hmm. Yeah. Go into where, how you met. And then uh, because yes. I, Carrie, you went to New York, NYU, right? NYU, I did. Yeah. Yes. You yeah. left right out of high school, went right into NYU. Yes, that's then, correct. Joel, what did what what did you do out of high school? So I went to uh, a college that was called Trenton State College at the time, and then while I was there, they changed their name to the College of New, Jer- New Jersey (TCNJ). Um, and I was first a math education major, and then I took a philosophy course, and then I was like, "Oh, I'm going to be a philosophy professor." <laughs> so I switched to philosophy, uh, and but I spent all my time at the theater <laughs> the entire time. Uh, TCNJ did not have a theater major, uh, but but I was, yeah, I was, the theater I, was I happening. very much dug into that. And yeah. um, and actually uh, part of what got me to Labrie was um, that I ran out of steam and funds uh, and so, uh, and hadn't finished a degree. So I sort of just dropped out and went to work for Bristol Myers Squibb uh, temping and then, and all of that. And then kind of hit a wall there too. Although there was key thing happened in 2001 that helped. And then, um, and then you found your way back to school a- after a while. Day. Yeah. Then I went back. And so I actually finally got my bachelor's degree in 2006. So I graduated high school in 1994 and then got my bachelor's degree in 2006 and, uh, wrote my, uh, senior thesis in uh, philosophy on cynicism, um, and which is which is a good thing to write when you've gone through uh, that kind of stuff. Um, and then um, moved to moved to New York, moved to New that. York yeah. in that in that late that summer, and met you. Yes, two weeks. Because yeah, because I needed. To we ended up working at the same restaurant together, and I had been in New York already for a while, so I was already like a New Yorker. And yeah. here comes this guy from Jersey trying to tell me how to do things in this at restaurant. One <laughs> restaurant of like twenty I had gone to that didn't care, like didn't care that uh, I didn't have New York experience, even though you know I had. Definitely yeah, that's true. It's a thing. Before. Like you, you can't get a waiter. You can't be a bartender in New York unless you've been a bartender in New York. And this is all like catch twenty two. It's basically like Bill and Ted with Eddie Van Halen in the music video. Oh, right. Yeah, much that's better. Better, much better <laughs> analogy. It's yours is great. I don't know. What do you mean better? I don't know. So uh, um, so we met in this restaurant, and it's an Upper West Side like seafood joint by night, and like brunchy upper west side brunch by weekend day um and uh nothing brings people together like slinging brunch in the trenches together it's and folding like, napkins and talking shit about people right like oh really is that <laughs> uh no i think it's it's i the, think it's uh, slinging brunches it's and, slinging brunch and, and, for sure. yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so what year was that that you met in the restaurant uh like oh six oh six and then so we sort of went from um oh oh why are you so annoying yeah 
to, okay, I see what you're doing there, the way you rack those glasses. You care about details, to, wow, you're really a good, you're kind of cool, you're a friend, to, we're really friends, we're hanging out. To, like, oh, oh, I love you. I love you. Whoa. (laughs) I remember the first time that I was, like, I felt this thing here was... I was like, wait a minute, you have a theater degree from NYU? What are you, what are you doing? When are, when are, when are you going to do something? Um, and I remember you saying, um, that's all done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was at a down place in that time. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, no, it isn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I said something, you know, snarky, like I do. And then uh, I kept trying to get you to come out. I, I lived in Queens. Mm-hmm. Um, New York is is a big place for anybody who hasn't yeah, been no, here. It's, it takes you an hour and a half. It's like, easier yeah, for me to go visit people in Trenton than it is yeah, exactly. certain parts of Brooklyn. <laughs> um, uh yeah, so I'm like, no, I'm not. You know, I I'm welcome Washington Queens. Heights and Manhattan. I'm like, <laughs> I am not going to Queens at night, uh, late, like, and then how am I getting home? You know, so no, uh, yeah. I did not join you yeah. in the open mic adventuring, but I did eventually join you in the open mic adventuring. But because- like, not and not until like after we were married, right? Yeah. So this is 2007. We started really uh, hooking up or something, um, and then. Uh, And we were inseparable and we have been inseparable sort of since, Uh, but it was 2012 before we did anything musical together. Yes. And then 2014 is like when when Haku and the Gun 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 came. And that's a whole story, but yeah. So let's get that story. How, what was your vision or your dream? You, because I, I've, I go, by the way, everybody go to their website hotglueandthegun.com and got some there's some great like i i, I watched that whole hour <laughs> oh cool yeah. our, oh from the from our gluey zuma era <laughs> and then yeah. and then a few of your yeah you had a cool a couple of cool interviews that i yeah it was really fun and your youtube channel too so everybody check that out and uh but yeah get give us give us what your dream was for hot glue and the gun well, you know, explain the name as well. Sure. Um, yeah. I so, so yeah, two questions at once. So the <laughs> thing I was just gonna say was that when we uh, had met, we were both in a place of like not really doing much creatively. It was a time of like you know working in New York City restaurant and like reflecting and figuring out who we were as individuals work and, drink get wasted mess around with some other things get back to work I, that was sort of your journey i was more in a place of like just pay the rent just pay off the student loan just just let's get through this let's get through this yeah, yeah. and uh then um we started so after we began dating and we were searching spiritually together you know it wasn't just like me as a single person but we were we were on a journey together um we started to dive into uh different kinds of workshops i went and found um some women's work that i really enjoyed and then together we found shaking medicine um which is uh bradford keeney and I, I don't need to go all into that, but we never met Bradford, but yeah, we worked um, with two, three of his students. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and it's an ecstatic dance. And we were searching for um, healing through through that with a group of other people. I would say there were three really like pivotal things we were doing. One was mm-hmm. a, a friend of ours put together something called Artist Circle which was an accountability circle where you check in with each other once a week and you try to get yourself moving. Another thing was uh, there's an acting coach we work with, uh, Pete Metaliano, who would do lab and it would help us get over the, like just being stuck. Uh, Mm -hmm. And then this piece, Shaking Medicine, came Mm -hmm. out of this community uh, that was, um, this was at... uh, our uncle and aunt's 
place in uh, Glenmore, Pennsylvania. And, uh, and so the the leadership there recognized that we were both hurt people from music and theater. Like they recognize that there's like music that's happening inside these people and that it's not coming out. So we were and presented storytelling. with a challenge yeah. uh, for the next uh, meeting that was gonna happen. You know, it uh, these weekends happen over like a Friday, Saturday, uh, kind of like, you know, wild goose. And then uh, Sunday morning is like prayer and go. I wanna get to that in a second because sure. first I wanna talk about like, you know how it's it's like you 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 wait so long to do this big spiritual step, yeah. whatever whatever it is to get past that fear or that block, and then to make a move, and then you're like you want to take a moment and breathe, but then it goes. <laughs> so that's kind of what happened. Is like we hadn't done anything at all much, and then um, the one of the facilitators was like, Joel, just strum some chords on guitar. All right, Carrie, sing something, anything. Uh, and imp like- An improv. Improv happened. was like yeah. a big, I remember you being like, I don't improv. <laughs> it's not a thing yeah. we do anymore. Um, uh. And then that happened and was felt really, really good. And then that night, <laughs> Andy comes up to us and he says, okay, so the, the next weekend is gonna be in June. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to do is on Thursday, you're going to have a concert for all of us. Yeah. Before the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And so we had to dream up what that concert would be. Yeah. Um, one of the things that they talk about in Shaking Medicine is that like from the belly, we are, and this is a, a teaching that, uh, that they got largely from the Bushmen in South Africa, uh, which is that we are connected, all of us, from this, you can't see it, these ropes that connect you to me, to you, to all of us, and arguably all things. And rope from our bellies. Rope from our bellies. Mm -hmm. um, it's like and so to connect us with all creation, all, all, yeah. all of things that exist. Yeah. Huh. Yes. And so we were trying to come up with an idea for what the show would be that we would do that Thursday. And we were, you know, jamming and thing, whatever. And we saw these two construction workers digging mm -hmm. and finding this hot glue gun and glue sticks and a canvas. Mm -hmm. And we were like, great all of the people in the community will be able to glue together while we sing and tell stories. Yeah. Oh. We invited the group to bring something of theirs, something personal, uh, and something personal that they were willing to give up, you know, something that they were willing to release or. And shameless plug, if anybody is going to the Wild Goose Festival this summer in yeah. 2024, uh, bring something like that to the studio tent because there will be an opportunity to uh, get gluey glue. with us. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's like a community collage. Is that a? Is that a? Or not different? Is yeah. It? I mean, the word yes. we were given, we didn't know the word for it either. But somebody said it's assemblage art, which I, I like mostly because it's got the word ass in it. Um, <laughs> and yeah. And this particular bit Our of background here. that happened, uh, this happened during uh, 2020. 2020 when we did the Gluey Zoomy show because we were all be in inside and we were all on Zoom. And so we would have um, people mail. Well, and we didn't even ask for this. Like people just mail started mailing stuff to us huh. and then we started to really ask for it. But like we received all these things through the mail and then, you know, kept gluing them on each week as the show went on. Um, so. Cool. Uh, yeah, that kind of kept us connected to our community during um, uh, COVID years. And theologically, or that's not a word. Um, <laughs> we're, we're very much uh, interested in what happens when, one like 
the idea of maybe, maybe it's Quinonia when mm -hmm. somebody's story resonates with somebody else, because this is what happens in shaking medicine. And this actually happened in, in like work that I did, uh, like when I was in the thing that like got me out of that rut was really in 2001, I did this weekend with uh, an organization called the mankind project. And, um, What I learned there is that the piece of shadow work that I'm holding always shows up for somebody else in the circle. Mm -hmm. And if somebody's willing to be open and vulnerable and tell their story, mm -hmm. other people get healed by it and it encourages and it encourages. And if enough of that happens, it really, it heats it, the container, the space, yeah. To a place where then like shit gets weird. <laughs> or then, shit gets hot. Like, and that's yeah. what we're called, you know, that's why it's, our motto is our be the glue. Be the glue. And we're, our job is to get it hot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Heating up the glue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I, <clears throat> Joel heard a little of my story. And of course, my audience knows that. But the, uh, you know, I went to rehab about five years ago for a Xanax and alcohol addiction. It was kind of a two and a half year period. And I, I lost my mega church pastor job. It was a church I planted and I wound up in recovery and it was such a dark space in my life. I literally just felt like an atheist and just literally questioned everything I'd ever believed, everything I'd ever taught, you know, and really felt like an atheist. And then, but I got into, you know, like the 12 step, uh, recovery world. And the thing that I just fell in love with was the honesty, the vulnerability and the humility. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of going through the sermon on the Mount right now. And I'm thinking about these core values that, you know, like if we strut our successes and strut our egos, people might be impressed or people might be jealous or people might want to attack us. But when we, I've just, when we genuinely share our vulnerabilities, uh, there's just something like it. That's what I call the spirit moving now is when people share their honest selves in total vulnerability. That to me is, is some of the most special spirit stuff that I experience mm. uh, in any kind of setting. It could be a meditation setting or, you know, church or whatever, you know, but uh, in music theater. Wow. I love that. I don't, that is the glue. Yes. That's the glue. That's the glue. Thanks, Fred. That's glue. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's it. it. That's it. Aww. I love that. So so you've man, you you do such a great job communicating story through theatrical music. Is mm -hmm. and I, I that's I want to use your terms rather than my terms, but on your uh on your on your cards you have two things. One is intimate and interactive and the yeah. theater rock on theater rock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I want you to dive into just some of those concepts that you're bringing to through your music and through your theater. What are some of the, the dreams that are some of the things that you want to have? Like the vulnerability pieces is, is amazing, but you, you do such great storytelling. Give, give the, Give our listeners some of the sense of what you're going through when you do your theater performance. What is theater rock to you? What is intimate mm -hmm. and active? Yeah. Uh, intimacy, you know, we we both really prefer theater that happens in the round, theater mm -hmm. that happens in a black box, you know, a, a smaller space because we really like the breakdown of the fourth wall. So like there isn't really a wall between us and the audience. We wanna be able to have, uh, uh, you know, this rope that that connects us in it and, and really have conversations uh, throughout it. And I, for me, that kind of theater is so important because each and every, uh, show will be completely different because the room is different. Right. Uh, so I really, uh, you know, 
like we pray that we're open and listening and that the audience is open and listening so that when we're all together, um, a, that, a listening conversation. That a listen, listening happens both ways. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what we're going for. So like, so we, so we're pushing against presentation Right. Um, and I think that it's not a mistake that the two of us were, you know, in our in our maybe you call it the first mountain or or the egoic self. Right. Both of us were well trained on how to be very clear presenters. Mm. Right. And we have a lot of strength. And so part of our work is and, and how we access vulnerability is by sort of putting that on what we call the burning ground. Mm. Uh, uh, and then we're able to, and that makes the theater rock. Mm. <laughs> that makes the theater like actually rock that makes the versus, theater, yeah. oh, how cool that is. I'm so impressed. <laughs> rock should rock me. It should like yeah right uh, and so like to yeah poke and yeah. prod and insult the meat <laughs> and then the same and the same thing that it, in my not humble opinion at all mm -hmm. needs to be avoided at any cat cost if what you're doing is rock and roll if what you're doing is rock and roll and you're thinking about what's the perfect sound that needs to be happening rather than what is the spirit that needs to be getting mm. shaken loose in and among us, then you, I want you to take some theater classes. I want you to do some workshops and I want you to like really like learn how to, uh, learn how to rock. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, like Jack Black style. <laughs> Jack, I love Tenacious Jack D. Black. It's the <laughs> Tenacious D is the perfect. <laughs> forget Bowie, forget Prince, but Tenacious D. That's right. Um, that really rocks. Nina Simone. Uh, that too. She would rock okay. the room, right? And whatever kind of, she was doing a jazz composition. She was doing blues. She would do classical, whatever she, it rocked. Simone? Yeah. Talk about Simone. Which Simone are you? Nina Simone. Oh, Nina. Yeah. Nina Simone. Yeah. 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 I was listening to her. Uh, what is that song she does about the hanging tree? Oh, my God. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And wow. you got to be willing to like, and that's, you know. Um, Lynching tree or something like I, I forgot yeah. the name of the song. Uh, what's the name of it? The, uh, forbidden Fruit? No, you're, you're thinking of Strange Fruit, which is a whole other. Well, Strange yeah. Fruit, right. Um, but no, is it the Lynching Tree? No, and we're like all of us are having a total brain, brain fart that's fart. really uh, yeah embarrassing. So yeah, yeah. that's embarrassing. Yeah, embarrassing. there's vulnerability for you. There's <laughs> um yeah uh yeah yeah no, but it's deep, deep, deep work. Well, and that's deep what's work. that's the thing about like intimate um when you when you say the word intimate um there's there's something that uh, speaks to being quiet mm. uh but the thing is is that like and it, it's it's so transformational which why I'm so glad we were friends before we were lovers because in all of my growing up I was always trying to find a lover who would like love me and make me the best version of myself and I could be like all of that stuff but like you saw we got to see each other at our ugly yeah. sides yeah, and then sure. learn to love each other in that, Out of that. Mm -hmm. and that's that's intimacy intimacy is not seeing you on your best day right, right. yeah and friendship like too deep friendship yeah yeah, yeah. deep um uh, yeah. Do you? I, I don't want to like jump, but do you? Do you want to hear a song? Yeah, I'd and, love to. And I, like, yeah, and it'll, yeah, give us give us an example of how you do uh, storytelling and how you help connect people through music, theater, and storytelling. Yeah. And so this connect oh, us yeah. this, uh, this this rope that comes out of our belly and connects us all. 
All right. I'm so scared that the I will fail. Will. And I also know that we will fail, and that's okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, this is one of the first oh, yeah. pieces we wrote together. Mm -hmm. uh, there is not a recording of it released yet. Uh, and uh, it will just we'll just do it and then we can mm -hmm. <laughs> silence and it just uh it came to us on the edge of a river creek <laughs> yeah we were on a river creek uh yeah. and we hadn't written much uh together and mm -hmm. um you know like for, for us that that doesn't feel um theatrical mm -hmm. so when you were saying the theater part i was like is this gonna count and then right. <laughs> Uh, but I'm, but I'm curious, <laughs> but, but every time that we perform, people are like, you are so Broadway. And we're like, cool, cool. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Still learning what, you know, what that means and, and learning how, uh, to re both receive and be received. Right. So, you so know? part of our show would have a song like that. Right. And then, um, so part of be the glue would be that, which the the point of that is, as far as we can tell, is to to soften the hard places by resonating like what we're sharing and the longing that's in it, um, 
And so then when we, when we curate like a set list, we don't like have, this is the show and then we do it. We're going to find out, okay, where's the space that we're going to be engaging with people in. And then we think of these different uh, pieces that we do um, in like Commedia dell'arte tradition as what they call Lazis. So they, they have different energies and they have different pieces. And so we would do this at a spot and then we'd think about like what's next and where are we going to get the thing. So there's... Um, and there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. There is sort of an arc that we right. So work. the so the story so the so the over arc needs to do a thing, and then mm -hmm. each little thing need to be a piece that build toward that over arc. And then if you if you do it right, for at least one person in the room, there'll be a moment where a transformational yeah. thing happens. And then you we know we get it because not because somebody says to us after. Although it feels really great when people say, oh, that was great. But when somebody uh, surprises us or themselves, we know that we've, we've, done the, we've done the right thing. And I've never written a sermon, but like, is that how, <laughs> I mean, is there a similar, is there a connection? Do you want to go to seminary? We could go to seminary <laughs> and then we could like learn Is there a connection to like a sermon in that way of like, you know, there's a beginning and middle and an end. I mean, you're really kind of communicating a story and... Uh, the lessons in it and yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I don't play any instruments, um, but um, I've, I, I preached my first sermon when I was 16. Wow. Um, yeah. Three now. And what I, what I did what, along the way I started and Matt, Matt was on my creative team at the, at the mega church that I started and pastored for years. And we had a, this creative team where we would, I'd, I'd, we'd have a bunch of people and I'd bring the outline, but then we were trying to, you know, figure out ways to communicate the essence of what I was going to be trying to communicate sort of as a monologue. But then we'd try to think about all the ways we could communicate that way visually with video, with music, with, you know, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, Matt would, you know, we'd, find somebody who we could video a story and fit it into the message. And it was so much fun working with that creative team, a, a collaboration to, to communicate ideas. And so my point uh, along the way, I found a book by uh, this guy named Cleon who wrote, um, it's a little book called steel, like an artist. Steel yeah. Like an artist. Austin Cleon is his name. Austin Kleon, steal like an artist. When that came out and I read that, I, I bought stacks of it and just gave it to people because it was the first time I realized, oh, I'm creative. Like, I never thought I was creative. Oh. Huh. And it was like all of a sudden, yeah. and like I'm, I'm, I'm attending a, wider, a writer's workshop here in Kansas City now that meets regularly. And all of a sudden I realized that, that my, you know, kind of like the heart of my calling and this, this new element of vulnerability um, I don't know. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, I can, Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think I can relate, but that's been kind of a new way for me to perceive myself as a, as a creative artist through the medium in which I, whether it's, um, speaking or, you know, bringing together other elements to communicate what I want to communicate that aren't just speaking elements. Right. So I, I'm, I'm trying to grow in that myself and open that part of me up and, and be more creative. And so I'm trying to get myself around creative people. And by the way, yeah. we get you to Kansas city because one of my close friends calls himself the world's tallest harpist. He's a, Ooh. he's a, he's a gay black man <laughs> who grew up in the white evangelical church here in Kansas city, trying to pray the gay oh. away, gave up, came out, He's been voted by Pitch Magazine, which is our number one sort of culture and arts uh, thing here in Kansas City, as the best musician in Kansas City six years in a row. Yes. Uh -huh. Took over this place called Greenwood Social Hall, and he curates it. And he and he's trying to feature uh, artists from from the margins and uh, you know from from. Uh, people, you know, the queer community or, 
the African-American community, the Latino community, different communities that have been marginalized and really trying to profile that. And we're, we're wanting to bring in, we we're close. I was just at his place Saturday night for his 34th birthday. And uh, he did like a costume party and it's a place that only it's built for 30 to 50 people. And yeah. Yes. Intimate. All right. There's <laughs> a city who, you know, they play at clubs and then, you know, everybody's talking and nobody really pays attention. Well, Calvin created, started curating this place to have artists like yourselves come in and do that kind of interactive stuff with the room, tell the story. Uh, you bring your favorite foods or I was there with a cellist from Turkey who brought her favorite drinks from Turkey. Oh, cool. Yes. Immersed into the person's story and the rich history and to spend a couple hours together. It's you, this would be like perfect for, this and I'm, would be our, that's, that's our jam. Yo. Music yeah. And food really. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're our life base, right? I mean, that's like the heart of the community, right there. Music and food. Oh, uh, Calvin Arsenia is his name, and uh, yeah, we need to do this. This is a really good. Yeah, I've been yeah, trying yeah. to get him connected to Wild Goose, and Rod Rod knows him. Rod's met him. Okay. Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. So very cool. I love that vision. Can you do another song? Do you have another? Sure. Yes. Sure. Which one um, do you think of? Shall we do the one that we're in the process we're in the, of recording? We have like tomorrow, we're hoping to get the final mix, but you know how that, that goes. Recording's done, we're in the mixing final stages. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, There's quite a few tracks, because there's like, you know, guitar tracks layered on, and lots of vocal tracks yeah. layered on. <laughs> uh, there, there is yeah. more in this. Uh, we're, we're uh, shout out to uh, one of our favorite bands, who is a couple who write and sing together called Over the Rhine. Mm. You've never heard of them. Do yourself a treat and find them and listen to them. They have a whole sure. catalog. Um, they went to Libri. They, they did. Yeah. They did. Yeah, they, yeah, they did. Uh, it's a way station, I yeah. think. At least it was for me. Um, yeah, because it was like, yeah, well, okay, we think what we think, but let's have a conversation. You know, right. and that, that could be really helpful. Um, the... Uh, they say, you know, you, when you're writing a song, you want to have something on this level that's accessible mm -hmm. and then this level for people who want to dig deeper mm -hmm. and then this level that you don't even get. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what you're going for. I don't know if you're going to get it every time. Yeah. Um, and so uh, you mentioned queer identity. I was able to sort of pass and get along and never have to, like, pray the gay away. Uh, I... I identify as queer and non-binary and I could pretend to be a straight man by honoring certain parts of myself, but not others for a long time. Uh, and so that's, that's in this song as well. Uh, but uh, this song is. Yeah, but it does really uh, talk about the, our binariness uh, um as humans and our binariness uh, politically and, you know, it's, yeah, so this it's is about polarity. Them. It's about polarity. Yeah. yeah. And, and what that tends to serve. Yeah. Yeah. Called fallen. Hold on a second. We oh, you know what? We forgot to yeah, do the we're thing. Gonna do the thing where we turn on the, where uh, we turn on original sound. See, this is that part where now you all know it's live. <laughs> How's that? We hear it Thank now, you for right? That. Thanks, friend. Left, right, left, right, left. Right, left, right, left, right. Left, fallen, right, fallen. Left, right, Everybody left. Everybody fall in line. Right, fallen, left, fallen. Right, left, Everybody right. Everybody fall in line. Everybody falling, everybody falling in line. Falling, falling. Everybody falling in line. Well, I logged on this morning. Well, my daily grind can't sell you my soul. But you can have my mind when all the screens stop tapping in this grand design. Anesthetize the teacher. Left, right, left, right, left. Everybody falling line. Right, left. Sister and I lay my brother 
Give me your tide, give me your pour for our cold civil war. Give me your tide, give me your pour for our cold civil war. Selling your legacy for less than it's worth. Don't you know everybody needs a little cash in their purse? Integrity is standing on the line. Hey, sister. Hey, brother. Can you spare a dime? Left, right, left, right. Everybody fall in line. Right, left, right, left. Everybody fall in line. Everybody fall in line. Hey, you know, uh, that was the song I was going to request. So, <laughs> oh, <good. Okay>. Yay. <laughs> oh, perfect. Excellent. Did it for you. <laughs> I, I really like that song. That song hits hard. And it sticks in your brain. Like it's like I, I, so I was just, you know, listening to your stuff here for the last few days, getting ready for today. And yeah, literally that song was running around my brain even before I jumped online with you. So cool. Cool. Glad to hear cool. it. Right. That that Glad song has has a definite um, owes a lot to hip hop, uh, and one of the things in a hip hop song is that you have to have that hook and that earwig, right? Like that's mm. uh, so that, yeah. um, and it and it came from you know like the way that we write is is sort of gluey and collagey. So like there's there's all these notebooks and I bet you have them. I don't know if you intend to become a songwriter, but you know those little ideas that you have somewhere scribbled away. And so we call those like gems for songwriting. Mm -hmm. And we go digging in them. And then a lot of times we'll take things and we'll like Smash literally glue them together. together. Yeah. A little piece of your yeah. line from here, from mine from years ago, current. Mm -hmm. um, and that one came from an attempt to, we were doing a mashup of um, All Along the Watchtower, Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen, <laughs> and a third thing. Oh yeah, the, the chords are from um, 16 Tons. Yeah. I mean, that's not the only song to do it, right? You know that song? No. Shovel 16 Tons, oh, yeah. what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that was talking to St. Yeah. Peter. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Good stuff. Tell, uh, unpack uh, for us that song that you just did on right, left, and you talk yeah. clarity and conformity. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Unpack that. Well, and uh, and Babylon is in there too. Oh, so like we're we're, Babylon. we're addressing like the building of walls and the breaking down of walls. Um, and uh, and a little bit like that that um, that that kind of false true. ambition that is reaching to heaven without digging down into what makes us all together and in common and vulnerable, and yeah. what that leads to. Um, the 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 piece that 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 gets me in that song is a line which says integrity is standing on the line hey sister hey brother can you spare a dime which is a which is a callback to you know brother can you spare a dime mm -hmm. um but integrity is standing on the line so so in our minds there's a story of a person and we, and we were curious to whether this comes out but yeah. like who at the beginning of the song is like voices on my left, voices on my right. Um, I'm either attaching myself to one of them or I think how I feel, I don't know how everybody feels, but like pulled in these 
places mm-hmm. and further and further apart from each other. Speaking of C.S. Lewis definition of hell, like the gray town uh-huh. where people just get sicker and sicker of each yeah. other and move further and further away from each other until they're completely isolated. Um, there's that at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then our hope is that, and this will sound really cool in the produced version, is that at the end of the song, there's this call to move forward and march together. That the left, right, left, right, left, which was boxing us in. Away from each other is a call Is actually now together. we're marching together yeah. uh, in, in, in not a common cause, but unless the common cause is to march together. I mean, I'm not against common causes, but um, that's a little bit about it. Our- um, I hope I hope love is in that march. I think uh, we're <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Brian McLaren, I really uh, loved the the this the current season or the most recent season of uh, Learning How to See with Gareth Higgins mm-hmm. uh, called the Seventh Story. Uh, if you haven't listened to that yet, oh, yet. it's re- it's a real treat. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. Wow, yeah. so yeah. good. You know, I was thinking the. I have really close Palestinian friends. I've, I've been, yeah. been in the West bank and all yeah. over. I have friends from Gaza and, and then I have Israeli friends and I'm yeah. very close to the Jewish community center here in Kansas city and, yeah. and Palestinian friends here in Kansas city. And just the, you know, the hatred and the trauma and the generational trauma. And, um, you know, I, I just say, you know, retaliation, revenge, violence, violence, never heals violence. And, and if you got an Israeli and a Palestinian to sit down and share their trauma open and honestly yeah. and with, with each other to hear that trauma, all of a sudden two human beings who hate maybe generationally each other can find new ground. If we open up about our trauma, I think, I think we have to move through the trauma to connect or move through the brokenness or move through the vulnerability and the genuineness of our stories. Mm-hmm. We're unmasked. And we've put these walls in our way. I mean, we're, we're, you know, we've built these walls in between us, um, you know, uh, not allowing us to hear each other's trauma, but, you know, building up our, you know, walls of dogma or walls of uh, uh, tribalism and the uh, yep. Dude, we've gotten a lot of uh, good response from a song that we put out um, called "Ain't Gonna Be Pretty," uh, and the line on that song, um, the, the 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 I guess the refrain, maybe mm-hmm. the chorus is, "I'm gonna die, so are you. Ain't gonna be pretty." It's going to be true. And so we just, we sit with that. We sit with that, 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 that making it pretty, making it nice is not going to do it. I, I, I think it's just a different kind of violence. Mm. It doesn't work. And yeah. we have to go through, we have to be open and vulnerable in to our trauma. And we, we have to. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful. I look forward to, uh, seeing you again in person (laughs) and, uh, oh man, I'd love to get you to Kansas city. So we'll work on that. Let's work on that. Let's make this happen. No, we were talking about going out West. We gotta, we gotta get West of the Mississippi. Let's do that, please. Yeah. So the, uh, (laughs) yeah, Kansas city's kind of got some fun history because it was the, uh, sort of the furthest place West as, as America was moving West and, um, yeah. So yeah, they they say often St. Louis is the end of the East, and Kansas City is the beginning of the West. At least yeah. that's what they say here in in the middle. Yeah, you know. Cool. Oh, West uh, is a bigger is a big place. Yeah, is it, is. it is. Um, I go ahead. Just a quick question, you know, um, just in the spirit of the bonus thing that behind you. Um, oh. What's one book that's behind you that you have like 
either you're embarrassed or <laughs> about or it's or it's funny to you that it's there. Yeah. So if if I flip the the camera around here, you would see this is I'm in a basement in my life. Uh, there's probably six, seven thousand books. You know, I've, I'm a voracious reader. Yeah, yeah. And of course, my I spent most of my career, you know, I grew up Southern Baptist and then was in the vineyard movement. And so mm -hmm. I spent most of my years in the evangelical movement. Right. So the, the huge portion of these books would be, you know, from, from an evangelical perspective, but if I took you up to my office and showed you that bookshelf, it would be my, it'd be my whole new collection of Richard Rohr and everything. <laughs> my meditation stuff. I'm, I'm doing a to your training with Tara Brock and Jack Cornfield and mindful meditation. And so, yeah. So I was just came in here this morning. Like I've got, I've got this one history set with the Babylonians, the Hittites, the Persians and the Egyptians. And so some people come in here and say, Oh, that's what I would be into. <laughs> got commentaries over here, right. That uh -huh. are conservative evangelical. Then I've got Aristotle. Matthew Henry and such got history of western philosophy with bertrand russell <laughs> yes <laughs> classic thank, thank you thank you thank you that's that's our bonus question and you did great you passed you passed but yeah i just decided hey i'm not gonna hide anything this is who this is who this i is it right like this who, who i'm becoming you know <laughs> so, yeah. yeah yeah so but yeah, some people are totally drawn to the books and start looking to everything. And then some people don't even notice it. You know, it's so funny. But uh, yeah, I'm a book nut for sure. Sweet. Sweet. All right. Thank, well, you, hey, thank you so much for joining us on Spirituality Adventures. Thanks, everybody, for tuning into this episode. Let me just say uh, the best way to, to check you guys out that I found anyway is your website and your YouTube channel. Would that be accurate? That's accurate. Yeah, and I would say I, Instagram. They can find us on Instagram is, is too. Is where we're largely active. You can uh, instant message us. You know, there's. You can find out, and we'll be Instagram we'll be hot doing glue the gun, hot glue in the gun, That's and right. all, yeah, all lowercase with the ampersand. Okay, so yeah, check that out, and uh, we'll uh, we'll. I hope to get you in Kansas City, so at least some of my Kansas City crowd could uh, could could come check you out that would be fun oh my. sounds beautiful well, let's and, figure it and out we need some of your barbecue yeah yeah so. like school us <laughs> school please school us i'm excited to see matt uh, he's working on a on a, a video of three of the oldest barbecue places in kansas city yes. which are black owned and uh Great. that that's makes it pretty special as well so yeah. rock and roll i think or is elsie's black owned too Oh, all three of them. All the three of oh. the oldest ones that he's doing. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Ar he's like, <laughs> Arthur Bryant's one of the oldest ones who was black owned, but it's been, I think, bought by just recently by a white guy. But the history of it and most of the presidents have been to Arthur Bryant's. It was started in the early right. 1900s and they're the ones that invented burnt ends. Right. Yeah. Right. And then we've cool. got uh, Gates, probably right. Gates, black owned, and then one called LC's. And so, yeah. Hey. Oh, cool. I bet yours does that because I just saw oh, you do the, you make the heart and does it. Oh, yeah, yeah. It does. Oh! <laughs> something new, man. <laughs> cool. uh, cool. There's the glue. That's right. <laughs> There's the glue. All right. Uh, Thank you so much. Great. A joy yeah. to be on Spirituality Adventures. Thank you so yeah. much, Fred. Pleasure. So for thank you. some of your adventure with us. Yeah. 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 Take care, everybody, and see you All next time. Right. Hey, you made it to the end. Thanks for listening all the way through on this episode. By the way, if you're not already a supporter, go to spiritualityadventures.com, sign up for one of our monthly supports, and you will receive our bonus content. You'll receive lots of interesting information about our guests. Many of our musicians will do special bonus songs and report a song. So I wanna encourage you to do that. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Be sure and subscribe. Be sure and share any of the episodes that you like. And be sure and make comments if you like them as well. This helps us uh, get Spirituality Adventures out there to more listeners, more, more watchers. So whatever platform you're using, subscribe, like, share, make comments. 
and go to our website, sign up for our team and be a part of the team support. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next time.